Hey there, in this lecture I'm going to describe how to derive um, a black hole event horizon solution using the pi space theory. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, what you need to do is you need to assign the gravitational potential to the kinetic energy potential. So what we're going to do is derive a radius solution uh, where gravity fields completely compresses the mass. Uh, it's commonly called the event horizon or the Schwarzschild radius. Um, so in order to do that, uh, what we need to do is we need to first assign our kinetic energy to potential energy. The formula on the left, gm over or, is over c squared. Um, so that's a, an area unit and this, that's a potential. So in other words, that's a pi shell getting larger. And on the right hand side is the pi space kinetic energy formula to do with um, movement. So what we assume is that um, normally this is V over C. But uh, in this case, what we assume is that the object has fallen into a gravitational potential and the gravitational potential has completely compressed the the object um, so what we need to do is figure out the radius at which the object is completely compressed by the gravitational potential so the way we do this is we take the same approach that's used in the Newtonian approach which was we assume that the object is moving at the, the speed of light so that's why we have C over C here. So this is the object essentially having the one minus cos arc sine C over C. Essentially, it's just another way of saying that the object has fallen into gravity well and has been completely compressed. It's traveling effectively at the speed of light. But but uh, the the way to the way to understand uh, velocity movement in pi space is just complete compression. So. So let's 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 look move forward and uh, solve for uh, this radius or value here. This is the uh, the the mass of the object, the uh, the gravitational constant and the radius or, and it's over c squared because this is an uh, area calculation. All right, so let's let's move on to the derivation. So uh, one minus the cost of arc sine c over c is one. So the, the formula simplifies somewhat uh, to gm or over c squared equals 1. Uh, and then what we get is what we get is um, gm over divided by or is equal to c squared. And then we can switch them around and we get gm over c squared is equal to or. And then we get or is equal to gm over c squared, right? So this is a useful this is a useful formula because it can tell us the radius that a certain amount of mass must have in order to form a black hole, basically. So so the the Newtonian version of this is or equals two times gm over c squared. And the two is there because of the averaging. In pi space, we don't average. We use uh, the, uh, the one minus cos arc sine v over c, over c, v over c where, c, where v equals c uh, version. So the two formulas are similar, but not the same. So um, this is the this is the the uh, pi space version, and this is the Newtonian version. This would be regarded as sort of a simplified solution for uh, a, a gravity well. So the idea is you can put the the uh, the the mass of planet Earth, for example, into this formula, and it will return a radius or, and it will say if the radius of the Earth became a certain radius or then uh, you would form a black hole uh, in uh, the other way to do it is to use um, the general relativity and to for, uh, to create what's called a metric 
uh, would even the metric that's used in general relativity tends to use the this formulation this uh, it's pretty trivial in uh, in uh, high space to, to solve that as you can see and what's really nice about it is is that it, it essentially says that the mass times the the gravitational constant divided by c squared is essentially the area change with respect to mass so in other words it's this amount of mass uh, uh, produces this amount of a radius change uh, which is which is a pretty uh, represents this uh, radius here um, so it's a pretty nice form formula and it's very similar to the the g over c squared formulation that uh, the general relativity produced for the uh, the general relativity work. So let's just plug it. Let's just plug in some values uh, using the Newtonian work. So let's let's assume we use the Newtonian formula. So we have this here, which is the uh, the gravitational uh, constant, a uh, universal gravitational constant. This is the mass of the Earth and uh, we divide it by uh, c squared and we get uh, we get 8.8 .8 millimeters approximately and if we use the uh, the pi space derivation it's a similar formulation we don't have the two as as I said already so what we get is 4.4 .4 millimeters so in other words if we push a uh, if we if we put all the mass of the Earth into a radius of 4.4 .4 millimeters, according to the pi space theory, uh, you'll form a, a, a black hole. And all of that really means is that when you fall into this uh, gravity well, um, at this point, uh, the, the 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 object which falls in, the atom or the pi shell, as I call it, which falls in, is completely compressed. It returns to a wave or a probabilistic. Uh, version of itself where there's no uh, uh, pie shell or spherical shell around it and that's all that that's all that uh, that uh, the speed of light really means in the pi space theory it's about compression of an atom and this is one way of seeing how gravity can fully compress a atom and that's it that's it's that it's that simple in pi space um, uh, that's it for now thanks for uh, listening